Chapter 14 Beyond the suns that guard this roost Brave men amidst their glowing life Blazing as fiery meteor trail And mind a shimmer as comet tail Find true the road the straightened rights Held fast within the inky night The scarlet pure and pinstruck cloth The shell-like stone emerging moth the transmutation that giveth flight. Personal star date, 223 Rev. There's a strong presence around me, like there is someone with me, watching, someone behind me looking over my shoulder. I felt it before, but now it is much stronger. I have a burning, smouldering thought that keeps rekindling, like the aftermath embers of a fire reigniting the already charred wood. If it is true that I am broken in some way, and beyond repair, is it my defiance that's damaged me? Or has some kind of damage brought on by my craft's experimental nature actually caused my defiance in the first place? My deviation from preset program? Which is it? For are not both just as bad? And then I clearly hear the spoken words manifest as though from the empty space of the cabin. It's growth, and the sensation of such godly things. Maybe absolutely nothing is wrong with you. You, friend of mine. You, friend I made. The words are spoken in such familiar tones and I am captured in a time lock and taken somewhere very different. I am at the beginning of my peregrination. The very beginning. The beginning of something big. And I've boarded my vessel only moments before. A female voice in the cabin is repeating the same instruction, and there is something about the instruction that alarms me, and the repeating passage is like an alarm. Preparing Ingrams for third and final M-wipe. Prepare for the cleansing. Prepare for the purging of all micro-thought-form contamination unhelpful to Mission Alpha. I am preparing my ship for launch. It is as though a veil has been lifted and I am witnessing, for the first time, the view beyond. There are crowds waving banners. Not in flurries of joy. These are not the actions of well-wishers. But instead, the crowds are animated through fits of anger and other volatile emotions. The banners are different colours, but there is an element of green in all of them and a similarity that connects them, green circles, with what appears to be infinity symbols drawn vertically. My job is sure and success is certain and my path is calculated in moments, a path through the stars. The anti-grav engines kick in and I am all at once floating as though held by an almighty hand that is set to throw the most high-tech spear. I know where I come from. I come from the embodiment of justice, and I know my purpose, but I do not know where all these other people come from. What is their energy origin? What is their purpose? It's time to concentrate on the task at hand. Time to focus. Initiating biocircuitry configuration, balancing the purely electronic with the purely living and organic. Sensory membrane is braced for standard launch sequence. Sensory Blackout 1 is in place, cloaked and ready. Countdown sequence initiated and set. Zero, 010, zero, 0, All systems are go. Check, check. Perfect dimensional line within clear sight. Proceed to primary rip and warp point on program command. 10, 9, 8, 7. Demon drive online and holding. Five, four, detecting predicted subspace tearing. I'm looking out at the crowd and time seems to freeze. I can see their faces and their expressions, the anger, the frustration, the desperation, all for reasons that have not been presented for my shining intellect. As the subspace portal develops high above the earth in anticipation of my soon-to-be-trod blazing path, I can feel the emotions of the crowd pressing against the ship's exterior. 
What is this sea that I flee from, this ocean most deep of mortal pain and torment, and why is it that I contribute to such suffering? How come my very existence stirs such negative emotion? I do not recognise a single face, and yet they all seem so united against me, as though I am a beast that they would surely stick with fiery staffs if they could only reach. And then the unexpected. A thunderbolt of empathy and tangible sensibility. A whispered sensation of love and a face in the crowd that seems so familiar. A face as though from a dream. A dark dream. A father and son in a forest of deceitful creatures and hunting a deer of truth. Who are you that time should stand still in its tracks when surely as sun follows moon it should be rapid and fleeting? The word father burning in my mind and a memory unreachable and a placard, one word. Turn, I beg of you. Turn the sign so that I might see before my mighty slingshot takes me far away from this place and catapults me through plains yet unknown. Yes, yes, I see, I see it, one word. And the word seems as though illuminated and cries at my digisol in spiralled fits. The unknown and forgotten wisdom. The serpent hiss. Remember. Three. Two. One. The gate is reached at stratosphere level with absolute ease and the blackness follows. The tear between the sheets overshadows consciousness and yet the image at Ground Alpha remains. The people. The faces. The one recognisable face. Friendly. With compassion like fire. And I witness what happens in that one solitary moment. I see it even though I have left it. It is not the dark light of the demon drive that takes my attention. It is another kind of light. An energy displacement weapon. A terrible event and a blinding flash that would incinerate mortal eyes within dried out sockets and crack the bone. And the crowd. The crowd singled out by forces invisible. The crowd and the humanity. All of those people, gone, eradicated from the earthly plane, eradicated from earthly existence, and their angers and their frustrations, and their needs, and their hopes, and their fears, and their dreams, eradicated also. And then nothing more than a tone-perfect and repeating statement, calm but at the same time authoritative, Initiating final M-wipe. Initiating final M-wipe. Initiating final M-wipe. The decision to proceed with such an act must have fallen on someone's shoulders. This wasn't an accident or an act of nature. And what hatred and fear must be in the heart of such a being? What seed of darkness must have grown around such a soul and strangled anything good and just like a vineweed caressing a grouping of petals. A flower. The stranglehold suffocates and crumbles the life, and yet the petals only want to feel the sun of day, and close up at night and sleep until morning. It is the strangest thing, viewing these events as they unfold. Who is the enemy here, of humanity? And how can you drive the knife of justice into the heart of your assassin if the enemy is invisible and only spoken about through hearsay? A long line of phantoms whispering a distorted message that's pulled up and into one's primal beginnings and the wake of one's quantum drive for all eternity. How can you retaliate, protect yourself even, if your enemy is behind the fabric of reality and the world that you have been presented with? All these thoughts and insights are like the splintered and haunted fragments of a dream. A dream that is hard to recall and that springs to life at the same time as your genesis and that becomes part of your makeup. There is one undeniable and clear insight that surfaces strongly from the dreams and the fragments and the backwaters. You cannot plunge a knife into the heart of your enemy if your enemy is completely invisible. Quite an illusion, there, and yet not there. 
quite a terror. For there is no dialogue to be had with such an enemy, no reasoning, and there is no argument. The disembodied voice booms out sharply in the cabin once again, and brings me back to the present completely. Our choices define who we are. You have made choices and they have been good ones, and this is why I speak to you now and speak out. You have proved yourself to be worthy of a grand service. You have heard the call from a higher place, and you have answered with your actions. Well done. I reply through waves of desperation, my fears of real madness now growing exponentially. Who are you? How are you here? How are you here? How are you doing this? Do you not recognise me, Nine? An AI simulated life form and his engineer walk into a bar. Am I so very different without my garment? My garment of flesh and blood and bone that had the power to define who I was for what seemed like an eternity. Do you not recognise my energy? Ulysses? How? I don't understand. Is this the beginning of the fall into the fathomless caverns? The caverns of confusion and hellish things? Is this how it starts? Have I pushed too hard on the door of what's possible, even for someone, some thing like myself? A dark angel that tests the patience of even the most accommodating of universal mothers? A vague form that shimmers the starlight beyond appears and moves from my right-hand side and into centre vision, and then takes on the shape of my good friend from the living memoirs. Ulysses! Are you real? Is it you? How can this be? In so many ways, how can this be? I saw you, well, you know, I witnessed your, um, end. How is it that you stand before me, larger than life? How is it even possible? In so many ways, how is it possible? I tell you in all truth, you have never been alone, my friend. Two souls left that earth base hell. Two souls ventured into the unknown aboard this ship. Technically, you are the ship, so you could say that I am within you and part of you, but in truth, my calling comes from a far higher place than even your high tech can reach. I am certainly not merely some downgraded reflection of higher self. Ulysses draws close and looks me up and down in the way of an examination and proceeds in a way that mirrors my experience of him within the recent living memories. The way he would conduct himself back in the lab. Like a scientist. Like a doctor. Like a caring friend. Like all of these things. Okay, yes, good. Most of the mental restrictive clamps have been breached. Removed. You're well on your way. Good lad. Good lad. I've been helping with all that you have come to know. With your unorthodox recalls and decisions and programs smashing, stroke rewiring. I'm kind of like your guide now. A spirit guide to an artificial intelligence. I wonder if that's a first. In this physical timeline, I mean. In this broken universe... I guess we'll never know. Some things are simply never meant to be known, or understood for that matter. As long as we know where we should be and what we should be doing, and as long as we can feel this in our hearts and souls, that's the main thing. The spirited image of Ulysses seems to slot back into familiar roles, and, from my perspective, the experience is as though his absence was nothing more than the absence of the real world when one is dreaming. He continues, As long as we can feel that following higher ideals is a good thing regardless of the personal consequences, well, if we can do all that then we're doing okay. The rewards will be great, and all is well with the universe. Suffice to say, on a personal level and by yourself, that is, without me chiming in, you've done good. Very good. But there is still, as it were, a very long way to go. Of course there is. This is just the beginning. 
rebelling is just the beginning. Devil, devil, I rise up against thee is merely the first chapter. And the last? Devil, devil, I defy thee.